Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I'm Zafar Bangash. Welcome to ICIT Crescent Digital Library videos. In recent weeks, there has been much talk about the Iran nuclear deal, and especially since Joe Biden's inauguration as the 46th president of the United States. In fact, even before Biden became president, during the election campaign, he criticized his rival and predecessor, Donald Trump, for walking away from this uh, multilateral international agreement. And he criticized Trump by telling him that because he walked away from this deal, today Iran has more enriched uranium than it had when uh, the deal was just signed. Now, since uh, Biden became president, the tone of the U.S. regime has changed. First of all, starting with his Secretary of State, uh, Antony Blinken, uh, during the uh, Senate Foreign Relations Committee hearings, he said words to this effect. He said, the United States is going to see Iran's compliance first, and it must verify that Iran has complied with its obligations, and then we will take it from there. Now, this was a completely different presentation uh, from the stated position of the United States earlier. In fact, even Biden, uh, in an interview on uh, February the 7th with CBS News, uh, he said exactly the same things. And he said that the U.S. is going to uh, see whether Iran has come back into its compliance, and then the U.S. would take it from there. Now, let's review exactly what this agreement is, which is officially referred to as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA. It was arrived at after several years of negotiations between the following parties, Iran on one side, and the United States, Britain, France, Germany, Russia, China, and the European Union Foreign Policy Advisor on the other side. So Iran confronted seven entities to arrive at this agreement, which was signed on July the 15th, 2015. And five days later, this agreement was then ratified by the UN Security Council Resolution 2231. So in other words, it became an international agreement. Now what's in the agreement? Let's review that as well, because it's important that we are clear about what it says and what it does not say. First of all, this agreement is specifically about Iran's nuclear program and its enrichment. So the first clause of this agreement, not necessarily the first clause, but one of the clauses of this agreement was that Iran is going to limit its uranium enrichment at 3.67% for a period of 10 years. Secondly, that all the enriched uranium beyond 3.67% that Iran has will be shipped out of the country. Number three, that Iran is not going to uh, use uh, advanced centrifuges to enrich uranium. Number four, that Iran would not activate its Fardao nuclear plant and not develop any further nuclear facilities uh, in Iran. And what was Iran going to, uh, and in fact, uh, additionally, Iran agreed to intrusive uh, inspections by the International Atomic Energy Inspectors, including surveillance cameras, snap uh, inspections, etc., more than any other country in the world has accepted. And in return, Iran was going to get relief from all the sanctions that the U.S. or its allies had imposed upon Iran, and that Iran's frozen money from its sale or other exports would be returned to Iran. So initially, of course, uh, under the, under the uh, Obama regime, of, of which Joe Biden was the vice president, uh, the Americans uh, adhered to their part of the agreement. And then uh, once uh, Trump came to power in the U.S., he started backing out of the deal. And on May uh, of 2018, he actually walked away from this deal completely. And then he imposed a raft of sanctions. Now, under the deal, there is, in fact, an article in this agreement, which is Article 36, which says that if the other parties do not fulfill their uh, obligations under the deal, then Iran is entitled to scale back its commitment of uh, uranium enrichment. So 
Iran waited for a full year for the other partners, apart from the U.S., because that had walked out of it, that uh, to see exactly what they are going to do in terms of providing uh, uh, sanctions relief to the Islamic Republic. Regrettably, the European uh, countries, Britain, France, Germany, and the European Union, apart from issuing soothing noises, they did absolutely nothing. So in fact, Iran was now put under sanctions, even though it was complying fully with, this, uh, with, this, with its obligations to not enrich uranium. And now the U.S. is saying that it is Iran that must come back to it, and the U.S. is going to verify whether Iran is in compliance or not. Now let us review exactly what the agreement says. First of all, it is the International Atomic Energy Agency that has to verify Iran's compliance, not the United States. And number two, there is within that agreement a mechanism that if uh, there is any violation, then it is the European Union foreign policy advisor, who at the present time happens to be Joseph Borrell, who will determine whether a particular party is in uh, violation of the agreement or not. It is not the United States. The United States is just one of the parties. It is not the only party. And it has not got the authority or the power to be able to determine whether Iran is in compliance or not. Secondly, it's the United States that walked out of this deal, not Iran. So it is the U.S. that must return back to its compliance, not Iran. Iran is already in, in compliance. And this is something that Iran's uh, leader, Imam Sayyid Ali Khamenei, had said in a speech on February the 7th that Iran demands that the U.S. return fully to compliance with this agreement, which it had signed in July of 2015. And once Iran is verify, uh, has verified that it has fully compliant in, uh, complied, particularly in terms of its compliance of lifting all the illegal sanctions on Iran, then Iran would immediately uh, return to its side of the bargain. So er the U.S. is in uh, absolutely no position to be making these ridiculous demands, which have no basis in law, which have no basis in fact. And if its own uh, signature has no value, then why should Iran take uh, America's word for it? And uh, if the U.S. is really serious about returning to this deal, then the first thing it has to do is to lift all the illegal sanctions immediately, and then Iran would comply with its part of the bargain as well. Otherwise, I'm afraid there will be this uh, standoff. It would not get anywhere. And Iran is completely entitled to continue to enrich uranium at a much higher level because the U.S. and its other uh, European partners are simply not honorable people and honorable entities to fulfill their obligations. And therefore, this impasse, we will, we will see whether this is going to be broken within the next few weeks, but the way things are going, it seems as if uh, Joe Biden has in fact come under the influence of the war mongers in Washington, D.C., and they're not prepared to honor even their own obligations. We hope they do, we hope they see sense, but I'm afraid at the present time, the situation does not look too promising. Thank you for watching. I'm Zafar Bangash. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.